What's up guys? Uh, today we're going to be breaking down some potential dark horses in the Big Ten uh, this year. We're going to be talking about a couple potential dark horses in the Big Ten West as well as the Big Ten East. Uh, when we talk about the Big Ten West the last decade or so, uh, Wisconsin has generally dominated that division. Um, they have a strong team again this year. They tied finished second in the West last year. They got one of the best backs in the country in Braylon Allen as well as a uh, you know, highly touted quarterback out of high school a couple of years ago, Graham Mertz. You know, he was a bit up and down last year, but in 2020, uh, as a freshman, a true freshman, he looked uh, great in the games I watched. looked like uh, one of the better quarterbacks This came through Wisconsin since Russell Wilson. Uh, he kind of took a step back last year, but it'll be interesting to see if he can rebound. And if he can, then uh, I think Wisconsin has a great shot to potentially win the West this year, uh, you know, but, you know, they're not really a dark horse. That's, you know, that's who we expect. I'm going to go ahead and talk about my favorite dark horses. Uh, you know, this is a team that, uh, you know, people know, but haven't really talked about a lot, and it's Purdue. Uh, Purdue has one of the best quarterbacks in the conference, if not the best quarterback in the conference right now, and Aiden O'Connell. Uh, threw for, I believe, 30 touchdowns last year. Uh, looked great against Tennessee in the bowl game. Uh, you know, he was up there, you know, mashing Hendon Hooker, uh, you know, drive for drive, going up and down the field for Purdue. Um, they have an extremely uh, veteran defense, a ton of seniors and fifth year seniors with starting and game experience on that side of the ball. Uh, they've got Brock Thompson, a wide receiver, who has a great connection already with uh, Aiden O'Connell. But, uh, you know, there are some questions as far as some other receivers uh, stepping in. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if O'Connell can form a connection with those receivers very quickly this year. Uh, if he can, then I expect Purdue to have a great season and, uh, you know, be a potential candidate for that Big Ten title game. Something that I think Purdue has going for them is their schedule. They avoid the you know the big dogs from the East. They avoid Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State. Um, one of their toughest games is against Penn State, and they open up at home against them. So if they can get past Penn State, then you know their schedule looks pretty favorable. Uh, and then another dark horse that people aren't talking that much about is Minnesota. Uh, they got a great head coach, PJ Fleck. And, uh, you know, extremely uh, veteran as far as the key positions on offense. At quarterback, they got Tanner Morgan coming back, who seems like he's been there forever. I know that he's been there and playing, you know, well for them since the 2019 season. They got one of the best backs in the conference, or potentially the country, returning, Muhammad Ibrahim. Uh, Torres Achilles last year. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great back, was a huge key to uh, their success in that 10-win season they had two years back. Um, they got Chris Ottman-Bell at uh, wide receiver, a uh, big play guy, and uh, a solid, you know, defense. Uh, as the defense is the question for Minnesota. Uh, you know, they lost some starters on that side of the ball. But if uh, those new guys can come in and play well, then I think that, they have the offense, given uh, they stay healthy on that side of the ball to really uh, put up some points and uh, do well in that uh, in that division. So those are my two dark horses for the Big Ten West, be Purdue and Minnesota. You know, everyone talks about Iowa and Wisconsin, but I'm not going to – those aren't dark horses. Those are people that are teams that contend every year. And as far as the Big Ten East this year, uh, we're going to leave out Ohio State and Michigan – I mean, I guess Michigan State, you could say, is you know an elite team as well. I actually think that they're my dark horse this year. Uh, they've got uh, Peyton Thorne returning at quarterback. They got a couple of big time uh, running back transfers coming in. Bruce Sard out of Colorado, as well as uh, a uh, what's his name? Uh, man, I forgot. Uh, he's he's transferring in from Wisconsin. Uh, he was the starting running back before Braylon Allen took over. Uh, he's a former uh, four-star uh, out of uh, New Jersey. It was the number one player in the state coming out that year. So they've got you know talent at running back. They got a good quarterback returning, and then on defense they got 
uh, a lot of seniors, uh, a lot of experienced guys coming back. And, uh, you know, they won 11 games last year. You have, a, you know, 11 games, your starting quarterback returning. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's always potential to have a great season. Another team in the East to keep an eye on would be uh, Maryland. Uh, they have, uh, you know, Talia Talgabailoa at quarterback, as well as uh, some great receivers. They got Jacob Copeland transferred in from Florida. Uh, you know, a great big play guy. They also um, have one of the be- uh, other, uh, what's his, I mean, I'm, I'm going blank, but they have another great receiver that's returning for them. And uh, I think the defense is going to take a step forward this year. They got a lot of players uh, that uh, have game experience and have done well. And I think that, you know, the ability to put up points is huge. And I think that Maryland is going to be able to put up a lot of points. It's just a matter of can the defense get off the field. If they can, I think they have the potential to, you know, make some waves. I don't know about winning the division. That's a little bit of a stretch, but potentially, you know, getting to that third, fourth spot uh, if, you know, if they were able to win some games. Uh, you know, Penn State is another team. They have a ton of talent on in that uh, on that roster. They got an experienced quarterback coming back, Sean Clifford. Uh, but it's just, uh, you know, some questions. Clifford hasn't played that well last year, and, uh, you know, they only won seven games. So, you know, going from seven wins to potentially, you know, having to win 10, 11 games in order to win that division, it's a lot to ask. So I didn't put Penn State in there, but they do have a talented team, a lot of four- and five-star recruits. So, uh, you know, they could potentially uh, be a team to look out for. But, you know, that's just a quick breakdown of the Big Ten this year as far as the dark horses and uh, you know, what to look out for in that uh, conference. So, um, you know, I'm going to be going through and uh, making some other videos on uh, different conferences and some potential dark horses. So, uh, you know, stay tuned and uh, looking forward to some uh, college football this year.